So, um, hello everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the organizers uh, to give me the, the opportunity to present uh, the work we have done with my supervisor, Benjamin Jourdan, at the uh, Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech. So, um, today I will, uh, I will speak about local and stochastic volatility models. And, uh, <clears throat> and one of the results is the existence uh, for a specific uh, local and stochastic volatility model, which we call regime switching local volatility. So it is about local and stochastic volatility models and also about calibration of models uh, to the market prices of uh, call options. I will spend um, a lot of time motivating this problem and uh, then speak about two results uh, we obtain about uh, those uh, local and stochastic volatility models. Um, so, first of all, um, this is not true uh, in reality, but we assume that the market gives us uh, the prices of the call options for all maturity big T and strikes uh, K uh, for a certain underlying asset S. Okay, so, <coughs> for instance, the, um, the price of the asset on, uh, on Facebook or uh, any other S&P uh, uh, firm's value. So in practice, we only have the, those prices for a finite amount of uh, T and K. Uh, <clears throat> and what is a, a call exactly? If I buy a call today with uh, characteristics uh, T and, uh, and K, um, at time big T, it will give me, it will give me uh, the payoff S T minus K uh, positive part. Um, <clears throat> so for pricing and aging purposes, we want, a model, we want to model this underlying asset so that uh, when we take the expectation, the discounted expectation of the payoff, it gives us uh, the real price given by the market, C of TK. So we want uh, to, to match the both sides of uh, this equation. So why do we want to do so? <coughs> It is because that banks do not only trade uh, call options, they also trade uh, much more sophisticated options. And um, the principle of edging and, uh, and pricing is that we, uh, the traders want to replicate the sophisticated option or at least estimate the price of the sophisticated options using um, the, the, sim the simpler options that are available uh, by the market. So this is why we want to calibrate uh, the model. Moreover, uh, and we know this since 1978 by result uh, from uh, Breeden and Linsenberger, the knowledge, if we make this assumption that we know all the co-prices co given by the market, the knowledge of all those prices uh, is equivalent to the knowledge of the marginal lows um, of uh, the underlying asset ST for our own uh, positive T. So this is why uh, Stochastic processes matching given marginals is a problem that uh, uh, arises naturally in mathematical finance. A first answer has been given by uh, Bruno Dupier uh, in his uh, uh, well-known local volatility model. And here, <coughs> ST is a Markov process uh, with sigma Dupier, uh, where sigma Dupier is a deterministic function of time and the level of the spot S. And sigma dpr can be explicitly expressed as a function of the derivatives of uh, ctk with respect to the maturity big T or the strike k. So this is the first element of answer, but it's not satisfactory enough. Indeed, what is good is that Dupier's model gives us a perfect fit um, to the market prices of call options, but actually it was the only um, degree of freedom that we had. Actually, if we, if we take, if we replace sigma dp by another deterministic function, actually uh, r is given by the market. Okay, so this is the interest rate imposed by the market. And once we have fixed sigma dp, we, uh, <coughs> we cannot change anything else in the model. So, in particular, what is unrealistic on dp's model is that the forward lows are unrealistic. So in the call option, we only needed to know the marginal lows of ST for, o, for OT. But there are other options, such that um, it gives me a payoff at a certain maturity T2, but actually it depends on the realization of an event at some time T1 between today and T2. So this is not a feature that is captured by Dupier's model. So the, the first motivation here 
uh, for some years that it, it was to gain, uh, uh, to get processes with richer dynamics than uh, Dupier's model, but still satisfying the marginal constraint that we have imposed uh, at the beginning. So, 10 years later, Lipton and then Peter Berg suggested a local and stochastic volatility uh, model. So what we have here, we still have a deterministic function of the time and spot, but we add uh, uh, some uncertainty uh, with a random multiplicative factor uh, f of yt, where yt is another uh, stochastic process, for instance, a uh, jump process or uh, e, to, uh, e to integral or something else which could be autonomous, for instance, or depending on S. And <coughs> so what we, what we have here is that, uh, let us suppose that we fix F, and now I want to calibrate uh, S to the market. So I have some degree of freedom on sigma. What sigma should I choose? So the starting point of the calibration is the Junji's theorem. Uh, which is an important result uh, that uh, was published in uh, 1988. And it says that if we have uh, X, I need a process that is satisfying this, <coughs> this dynamics with alpha and beta, some stochastic adaptive processes. Then under some mild, 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 there exists another Markov process. Why? Satisfying dyt is equal to this diffusion where A and B are deterministic functions. And the, what is interesting is that X and Y have the same distribution for OT. Moreover, we can construct A and B as functions of alpha and beta through those uh, equalities. So A and B square are the conditional expectation of alpha and beta square with respect to uh, the position X of X. So now what we, what we do is that we replace uh, the diffusion uh, the dynamics of uh, the local and stochastic volatility model here, and we replace uh, y by the Dupier equation, and we identify those two terms. What do we obtain? We obtain that actually the model, the LSV model, is calibrated to all the core prices if we make this choice, sigma tx is equal to the ratio of the Dupier uh, function. Uh, under the square root of the, stochastic, uh, the conditional expectation of the stochastic volatility with respect to the position of the um, underlying asset. So what we obtain here is an SDE that is non-linear in the sense of McKean due to the presence of the conditional expectation uh, here in the denominator and which is quite a nasty term. So <coughs> from, this, uh, from this equation we have two open problems. First one is, do we have global existence and uniqueness to those LSV models? Because the coefficient here doesn't not, uh, does not satisfy the standard uh, hypothesis um, uh, in general to, to deal with uh, some uh, nonlinear Machine equations. Uh, what, uh, one of the standard assumptions is that we have uh, some Lipschitz properties with respect to uh, the joint law of S of Y uh, and with uh, the Wasserstein metric. But here, this is a conditional expectation, so actually we, don't, uh, we know pr uh, uh, particularly nothing about uh, the behavior of the, uh, the law and the conditional law. And another, one, uh, another feature that is interesting is the convergence of the particles method used to simulate the SD nonlinear in the sense of Machine. Actually, this algorithm already exists and uh, is implemented in the banks, uh, has been implemented in the banks for about 10 years, but uh, we still do not have a convergence results or um, estimation of the speed of the convergence. So <coughs> uh, what I would, I would just talk about is some, uh, some advances in uh, those uh, open problems, some elements of uh, answer. And on the first question, uh, we will establish existence to a special case of the LSV model. Uh, so what is this special case? We just specify uh, the dynamics of YT. And uh, what we have here is that we restrict YT to be a jump process that only takes a finite number of values in Y1, YD, so D values uh, at most. And uh, the, pro the, the probability to jump from YI to YJ knowing that the level of the spot is x, 
is given by uh, the jump intensity Qij. So this is what we call a switching diffusion, because actually uh, yt is a piecewise constant, and is a special case of the LSV model. And moreover, the jump distribution and intensities are functions of the asset level. So the first result uh, is this one, is that, okay, well, first of all, uh, let us forget about all those assumptions. So the main result is that there exists a weak solution to this SDE, RSLV, provided that we have some regularity conditions, some uh, soft regularity conditions on the sigma UPR, uh, boundedness, uniform boundedness on Q, and another kind of abstract uh, condition on a certain matrix a gamma, uh, so it takes a some time to uh, try to explicit or give sufficient conditions so that C is satisfied. So <coughs> if D is equal to 2, actually C is always satisfied and it's sufficient to take uh, gamma is equal to identity. And uh, we have some um, other conditions for D uh, bigger than 2. But morally what it says is that if uh, the range of f square yi is not too large, actually we can ensure condition C. So why uh, do we have a, this kind of condition? Is that uh, in order to prove uh, this result of existence, um, <coughs> we first consider the Fokker-Planck system associated to this uh, SD. And uh, the condition C here ensures the coercivity property under this uh, Fokker-Planck system. So, uh, so that uh, we can apply Galerkin's uh, procedure to show existence uh, of a solution to the PD system in the sense of distributions. And after that, once we get the uh, solution to the Fokker-Planck system, we generalize uh, uh, a result by Alessio Figali, which uh, enables us to get back to the weak solution uh, to the SD. So this, is, uh, so this is the origin of condition C. It just uh, enables us uh, to compute uh, useful energy estimates uh, in, on the PDE side. Okay, but actually uh, the techniques we used to establish uh, the existence of a regime switching local volatility model cannot be uh, used to prove uh, calibrated LSV models in a general case, for instance when, uh, when Y is an uh, ETO process. <coughs> but uh, the time discretized version of this SD is much simpler. Okay, so now I just change a little bit of notation. I just consider x is uh, equal to uh, the log of the spot. And uh, I, I take a mesh, uh, I discretize time with a uniform grid uh, of a size uh, t over n. And what I have here, x and t, is just actually the other scheme associated to the SDE. And here, uh, all the coefficients are freezed at uh, actually the, the biggest uh, discretization time, smaller than t. Uh, smaller than t yeah. And uh, <coughs> so the result we have uh, on the numerical side here is that under, regu under regularity conditions of f, sigma, and the test function phi, uh, we, there is a constant c such that the weak error between uh, this other scheme which, uh, which uh, um, poses no problem of existence or uniqueness, as long as we can control the moment as the discretization times. So this is uh, existence and uniqueness of uh, Xn is easy. Uh, the, co the weak convergence of Xn to ST, but actually ST is uh, the same as the sigma GPR, because what we ought to have is that we have calibrated, uh, calibrated our, our model to the market prices. So even if ST does not exist, we could replace ST by S du pire at time T, as it, as it should have the same marginals, and the weak convergence uh, holds at the rate uh, 1 over N. But actually, uh, the purpose of the time discretization is uh, simulation. But this SD, we cannot simulate uh, it for the moment, because we don't know how to compute this conditional expectation. <coughs> so the idea, uh, in order to, to make it tractable and uh, <coughs> uh, simulable on the, co the computer, is that we are, uh, we are going to approximate the conditional expectation uh, using a kernel approximation and a particles, uh, interacting particles system. So we take n big N particles and uh, big N independent uh, Brownian motion, and okay, and each one 
each particle actually follows more or less the same um, dynamics as previously, but is driven by an independent uh, Brownian motion. But here, the conditional expectation here uh, bears an interacting term, where here actually this is an approximation of the conditional expectation, and uh, morally the um, interacting particle system just says that we could replace the joint law by uh, the, the, um, the empirical joint law. So <coughs> with this, we can understand actually that the propagation of chaos holds, and we will have the same kind of result here, but for the moment, the speed of convergence is not at all satisfactory because we have very slow convergence, whereas uh, in the banks, actually, uh, those kind of algorithms converge in less than one minute. So yeah, this is ongoing work. So this is all I wanted to, to say today, so thank you very much. Questions? Um. So, for example, can you make your uh, process Y that you use to uh, modify your volatility uh, something that does not take only a finite number of uh, of values, but maybe a continuous number of values, but only jumped at exponential times. Uh, but <coughs> actually, the, the difficulty, the difficulty here is that uh, when we consider the Foucault-Planck system, uh, it, it helps to only have a finite number of uh, values because actually, otherwise, we would have an infinite system, and uh, uh, this is more complicated to establish as uh, we wouldn't know how to uh, derive an equivalent of the condition C we had. And actually, the condition C says that uh, if the range is not uh, very large, uh, if the range of the, the, the values of uh, the stochastic volatility is not very large, then we will have coercivity. But actually, as the number D grows, uh, the constraint on uh, the, the, the length, uh, the, the width of uh, the range gets smaller. So actually, it's, it's, uh, it's not direct that we would establish uh, this kind of result.